Welcome to the Betting Above the Rim podcast, episode 65. Today's date, July 1st. That being July 1st, today is, we're going to do a free agency special. I'll kind of go through all the players, the big names that signed in free agency in the last 24 hours to give you my thoughts on the fit and how it helps the team. Lastly, we'll go to the Motor City as J.B. Bickerstaff just got let go by Cleveland a couple of weeks ago now takes over for the Detroit Pistons, a guy that has turned around Cleveland and made him into a winner, just couldn't get there in the playoffs. I'll tell you what my thoughts about JB is going to the Motor City. But let's get started with the biggest one, dropped in the middle of the night. Paul George agreed on a four-year, $212 million contract to head east to go to the Philadelphia 76ers. And I'm going to kind of package this with Tyrese Maxey, who signed an extension of uh, five years, $204 million to go and stay with the Philadelphia 76ers. So when you think about the 76ers, folks, you think of now their big three, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and, of course, PG-13. What's great for this for JoJo is he does not have to carry the brunt of the offensive load. His usage rate will go down. Why, folks? Because Tyrese Maxey is damn good. You saw him in that series versus the Knicks really take over for that team. Who says goodbye? Tobias Harris says bye-bye. And I'm sure the people at Philadelphia are so happy that Tobias Harris has signed with, out of all teams, Detroit. We'll talk about that with J.B. Bickerstaff at the end. But if you think about it, folks, that big three, they're also bringing back Kelly Oubre. They signed Andre Drummond, right? They're addressing their needs. They got uh, Eric Gordon as a free agent acquisition to kind of fortify their bench. You have to like what Daryl Morey has done with this team. And you always knew that Daryl Morey was going to do something big to shake things up for the Philadelphia 76ers. So what a move by Daryl Morey to fortify his team and really, folks, now take a team with Joel Embiid, with Tyrese Maxey, you know, with Paul George, with Andre Drummond, with Kelly Oubre, you have to really think about the fact that this team, the Philadelphia 76ers, can be surely be put as one of the best teams. And I would dare say, folks, if they're not the best, second best team in the East with the Knicks, they're right there third. I think right now on paper, if you line them up by, by paper, and you let the two teams, out of the four best players, the only one there in the top four for the Knicks is Jalen Brunson. The other three, the big three of Philadelphia, all goes there. But then you have to look at Randall, you have to look at OG, you have to look at Mikel Bridges, right? You have to look at Mitchell Robinson, you have to look at all these guys, DiVincenzo, how they stack up versus the rest. So, yes, the, their top heavy Philadelphia is better, but the Knicks may have the depth, and I think they still probably have the defense. The next big move that happened today, and I'm not shocked at it at all, it's Clay Thompson leaving the Golden State Warriors, but heading to Dallas on a three-year, $50 million uh, sign and trade that brings him to the Lone Star State. Now, I know there was talk of LeBron James getting involved and calling him and trying to get him to go. Folks, What number one reason, he's more needed in Dallas. Dallas could not win the NBA title because simply, folks, they got outshot. They got outpointed at the three-point line. They needed to be better from three. And by getting Clay Thompson, folks, they have absolutely addressed that. And now you look at a three-guard attack of Luka Kyrie and Clay Thompson. Derek Jones is part of the trade moving out. But still, folks, and when you think about Clay, right, and you're going to say, oh, he's, he's, he's not the same Clay. He's not the same Clay. I get it. I get it. But still, he scored you 17.9 points per game, shot 38.7% from three. Right, that is the the second lowest of his career, behind thirty eight point five, a couple of years ago, coming off of the injury. So if Clay could get himself back to where he's been in his career, which is a forty one point three percent shooter from three, that really helps out a team that does not shoot the ball terribly well from three. I like this move. I think Clay was going to go there no matter what. And here's the other thing. When you are getting less money than what you wanted, P. 
people got to remember, Texas, no state income tax. That means that if he would have went to the Lakers, he is losing, I think, in, in California, I think 9% of his salary is state income tax. So he got that 9% back by not having to pay it. Remember that, folks, sometimes when you look at guys, when they go to certain markets, Florida teams, uh, Texas teams, like they having no state income tax is a big, big thing. It's also why, folks, just so you know, a lot of athletes make their residencies in those states in the off season because it kind of helps them with their tax purposes. Next big move, Derek White resigns. And let me tell you something. Out of, Brad Stevens is an absolute genius, okay? I know he brought in Holiday. I know he brought in Porzingis this past year. But his trade for Derek White goes down as one of the better trades or best moves that this guy has made. Derek White just got $125.9 million over the next four years as an extension. And it's so deserved as a guy that proved himself to be a really good player this past season, uh, shooting the ball 40% from three, right? Uh, scoring 15.2 points per game. Guys, his, his career average is 12.3, right? So this is not a guy that when he got to, uh, to Boston was scoring like 30 points a night. 15.2, folks, is the second highest of his career, only behind 15.4. But shooting at 39.6% from three, the best of his career, right? Shooting at the free throw line, 90% from the line, best of his career. 5.2 rebounds, second best behind that 21, 22 year with the Spurs. 5.2 assists, best of his career. Oh, by the way, he was second team all NBA defense. He is the perfect complement to Tatum and Brown. Why? He doesn't need the ball in his hands. He shoots it really well. He moves without the ball. And he plays great defense, and you can play him as a one or as a two. You pick your choice. What a move by Brad Stevens as the Celtics are obviously the favorites to repeat next year. Moving on, the beard stays west. James Harden signed a two-year, $70 million deal to stay with the Clippers. And, th and this is what I'm going to begin with. I don't understand Steve Ballmer. I don't understand what they're thinking, their front office, led by Lawrence Frank. I think he's still there. But if you really want to think about this, if you would have gave PG a fourth year, he comes back. So you don't give PG a fourth year because you gave Kawhi only three, but you're going to turn around and you're going to give James Harden $35 million? A, a James Harden? That, listen, he's had a fantastic career. First ballot Hall of Famer, right? 16.6 .6 points per game this season. I'm going to say, well, he's played with, with other stars, right? That's the lowest shoot, uh, scoring total he's had since his, uh, his last year, second to last year in OKC. His second year in the league, we only averaged 12.2. Uh, but you got to remember, those years, he was coming off the bench with those teams. Only got about 27 minutes a game. He still played 34 minutes. Uh, James Harden. It's at 42.8% for the floor. Uh, you know, listen, that is still almost a tick and a half below his career average. He shot at 38.1% from three. Okay, that's better, right? Free throw shooting, equal, right? Rebounds, equal. Assists, up a little bit. But to me, it just doesn't jive with what they're, what they're doing. They punt on bringing back PG-13. But then they turn around and give two for 70, right? They go and get, uh, you know, uh, Nicholas Batum to come back, right? They go get Kevin Porter Jr. to come back. They come back after his his the domestic assault issue and he had to go to Greece to play, right? They got Derek Jones in a trade. I just, I I don't I don't know what they're doing. I, I just, it didn't make sense. If you're going to let PG-13 go, then you let James Harden go too. And then you restart over with Kawhi. It's almost like they're trying to compete and they're trying to rebuild at the same time. And you know what that sounds like? A team that's in a that's gonna be in the middle. And I told you for most folks, either you're winning or you're rebuilding. You don't want to be in the middle. And that's exactly, exactly 
where that team is. Let's move on to KCP. This is the one when I saw the money, I was like, whoa, what, he got this? KCP signed a three-year, $66 million deal to go to Orlando. Now, I'm going to say this, folks. I think this is partially because I don't. they weren't getting PG-13, and I don't think Clay was going there. I think this is this is their 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 backup plan getting KCP. Now, what is good about KCP? KCP can really shoot the ball from three, and he was really good this past year, shooting it at forty point six percent for an Orlando team that was one of the worst shooting teams from three. It was an abomination to watch him shoot the ball from three. But now he's also a really good defender, so you slide him next to Jalen Suggs. And I think Suggs and KCP secretly become one of the best defensive backcourts in the league, and he stretches the floor for Wagner and Bancaro, guys that live in. Wagner can shoot a little bit better. Paulo can shoot it too, but they like to punch the gap and be able to drive the ball. Now this opens up the floor a little bit. For an Orlando team that, let's be honest, folks, they overachieved last year. Can they take that next step? They're going to bank on what KCP did when he went to Denver, which has helped elevate that team to championship contention. I like this team. I, I like this Orlando team a lot. I think they defend. They play really hard. But I'm not there. I'm not there. I, I don't think they're better uh, than Boston, obviously. I don't think they're better than Philadelphia. I, I don't think they're better than the Knicks. If, if Giannis and Dame can stay healthy, I don't think they're better um, than, a, than a team – uh, like Milwaukee. Uh, you got to see what, what, what Pat Riley does. He's losing guys, but he, he, he finds a way, right? Indiana, I think, is being undervalued. So to me, I didn't get it for a guy that only scored 10.1 points per game. But if you look at his shooting and he's look at his defense, it kind of makes sense. Speaking of guys on the move, how about CP3 and a mentor role, folks? As CP3 signed a one-year deal for $11 million dollars, to head to the Lone Star State to play with Victor Webanyama and the San Antonio Spurs. I want people to understand this right now, okay? There's one or two ways you do this. Either you go two-point guard system, start CP3, put Castle at the two, move Devin Vassell to the three, right? With Soham and Webanyama. Or... You put Kelvin Johnson with Sohan and Wabiyama in the starting lineup. Chris Paul comes off the bench. Castle, Vassell is your starting backcourt. Simply put, when you look at this roster of San Antonio and look at the, the core, like the core guys, Castle, 19, Zach Collins, old guy, 26, right? Uh, Trey Jones, 24. Right, they got the point guard Nunez. This is another guy they could kind of monitor and watch him over. Right, Sohan 21, Basel 23, Wabayama 20. This is an adult in the room, and this is kind of the same thing that you got. You're hoping you get out of Chris Paul that you got when he went to Oklahoma City years back when he kind of went to OKC and he was kind of that that mentor, that that big boy in the room to kind of get them to play the right way for a team that was trying to be on the come up, okay? So it's interesting that Chris Paul went there, but it makes sense if Pop wants a point guard on the floor that's an extension of himself, a smart cerebral player, someone that's got NBA pedigree, and someone that I think the players could look up to. Let's end today's podcast. Man, I went through that pretty quick. Going to J.B. Bickerstaff, who was hired – as the next coach of the Detroit Pistons. And when you think about it, listen, I asked for J.B. Bickerstaff to be fired. And I don't think J.B. Bickerstaff is a bad coach. And I honestly want to make sure I say this the right way. He may have got railroaded a little bit because he became the fault of a, of a, of a flawed roster. But you got to get rid of Once you brought in Donovan Mitchell, you knew that they he was on the clock. So they thought the best thing for them is for JB to be let go. So he goes to Detroit. And at first I was like, this don't make no damn sense. And then I thought about it. And then I was like, it does. It does, folks. 
So if you look at it, I, I'm going to throw out the year he was in Houston, right? As a, you know, as an interim, I'm going to throw out the time he was at Memphis. I'm going to just look at Cleveland. Cleveland, his first full year after an interim, they were 22 and 50. They were god awful. They were god awful. But they, he, he was brought in to build them up, right? To get those young guys to 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 play. I, I would play say play good basketball and teach them the NBA way. So what happened to Cleveland after uh, that season, right? Cleveland goes 44 and 38, a huge turnaround that J.B. Bickerstaff had, had did. And if you remember, folks, and I don't know if people remember this, that team, that team in Cleveland in 21-22, remember, folks, they were the seventh seed. I'm sorry, the eighth, the eighth seed. They lost to Brooklyn, and then they turned around and they lost to Atlanta. So they, they were eight seed. They lost two games. So they really should have made the playoffs, you would think, that year. So when you think about it, like go back to that 21-22 season. I want people to think about it, right? Darius Garland had a great year at 21.7, 8.6. Jared Allen has said that his game was a double-double guy. Colin Sexton only played 11 games, folks. Evan Mobley's rookie year was 15, 8.3, right? They had a guy named Laurie Marketing that played on that team that scored about 14.8 points per game. He did a really good job of, like, elevating those young guys, like getting Mobley in his rookie year, uh, obviously getting Sexton to play really well. Marking it was used as a trade chip as well to go get Donovan Mitchell. So I think this is a good spot for JB because I think JB is good with kids. He's good at player development. He's good at, guy, at getting guys to play hard. He's good at getting kids to play the right way, the NBA way. So when you go and you look at this Detroit Pistons team that just gave a huge extension, we should have talked about it, uh, to Cade Cunningham, a huge extension uh, to re-up uh, and extend himself. What is he going to do with a Jaden Ivey? Right? Is he going to find a way to get Jaden to, 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 to play the right way, right? Uh, to, to get him to commit more to the defensive end of the floor, right? Jalen Dory, can he take the next step? right, as a big. Let's see what happens with Isaac Stewart. I think he's trade bait, right? What do they get, uh, you know, uh, out of uh, Ron Holland, who they drafted in the first round, number five overall? They are going to be an intriguing team to watch because I expected them to make a big jump with Monty Williams. They did not make that jump. Maybe they make that jump with J.B. Bickerstaff. It's a good hire. They should give him some time. Let him do what he does, which is build up his young players. Oh, by the way, they got Tobias Harris. And they gave him $52 million. There's some things that he can fix. I don't know if that's one of them. This has been your Betting Above the Rim podcast for July 1st. For all things sports gambling, go get that Sports Grid app. Pre-game, in-game, post-game, props, predictions, and more the very best in the sports gambling industry. Next podcast will be shot July 3rd because Coach Young don't work on July 4th for my producer, Matty George. Vinny does a great job with the graphics. Thank you so much for listening, folks. Remember, it's smarter to be on SportsGrid. Good night.